UseReducer is probably one of the less used hook in the React library, but can be very useful when we have several use state in our components, especially when they are related to each other. The concept is quite simple. We have a function that handles our state. This function is called reducer and is invoked every time we dispatch an action. This function always receives the current state and the action, so we can check what type of action has been dispatched and update the state. Anyway, if uh, this is your first time using UseReducer, I highly recommend you to read my introduction on this topic that you can find on my blog. In this video, I will show you how to use the UseReducer hook in TypeScript, so you can strongly type your code. The first step we have to do is import UseReducer from the React package. This hook requires at least two uh, parameters. The first one is the reducer function that we will talk about later. And the second one is the initial state. The hook returns two parameters, the state and the dispatch. But now we have to define the reducer function. This function is invoked every time we dispatch an action. It always receives the current state and the action we have dispatched. Now we need to return the state in order to get the value in our component. In fact, as you can see, the console log now will print the current state zero. Now I can add a button in our component template in order to dispatch a new action. In this case, we will dispatch a simple uh, string that we call increment. And as I told you, when I, I dispatch an action, the reducer function is invoked. So we need to add some business logic inside the reducer function. For example, to check what type of action we have dispatched, increment, decrement, or something else. So if our action is equal to increment, we just return the state plus one. Anyway, our action by convention should be an object with a type property that is the name of the action, it's called action type, and the payload, the data we want to send with the action. And since the action is not a string anymore, we need to update our condition with action.type and the state returned by the reducer is the state plus action.payload. In fact, as you can see, now the counter is incremented by five and not by one anymore. Now I want to add a new action called decrement that has a different payload from increment. Of course, I need to update our reducer function. I could use any else, but it's better a switch case since I want to handle multiple action. So the switch analyzes the action.type and in the case of an increment action, we returns the state plus action.payload and case decrement state minus action.payload. As you can see, the demo worked as expected. The value is incremented by 10 and decremented by 5. However, our code is not strongly typed. In fact, we can set any action here and we don't want that this happen. So we can define that the action must be increment or decrement, but it's not the right solution because the action is not a string anymore. It's an object with a type that can be increment or decrement, and it can have a payload of type number. In fact, if we try to set an action that is not supported, for example, ABC, we will receive an error, a compiler error, that says that ABC is not supported. And the same happens in the reducer function. We cannot set an action that is not supported. Anyway, it's more readable and reusable if we define our action in a new type that we call app actions. Currently, our state is a simple number, but probably in a real world application, the state would be more complex. For example, now we can create a type that represents our state that contains a counter of type number and a random value always of type number. So we can use this new type in our reducer function and we need to update our cases to use state.counter and not just state anymore. Furthermore, we also need to update our initial state in use reducer because it's not just a number, but an object that contains counter and random that now we will start from zero. As you can see, there are several errors. The problem is that now our reducer just returns a number but our state is an object, so we have to update our cases in order to return the previous state with all its properties 
and we need to update the counter property with a new value. But we still have an error because we are printing the whole state and it's not possible in React. So we update our code to print state.counter and dot random. Okay, I want to show you another scenario. Let me add a new action called random. And we update the reducer function as well with a new case for the random value. And this time we just return the state and we update random with a new random value. We don't need the payload anymore. So when we dispatch the random value, we can remove the payload here. As you can see, there is an error because the payload is required by the app actions type. So we can think a good solution could be set the payload parameter as optional using the question mark, but we receive another error. Since we are using a math operation here, a possible undefined value is not allowed. So how can we fix this problem? A possible solution is create separated action for each one. For example, we can create a new type for the increment action and we can do the same for decrement and random. But this time the random action doesn't require a payload. And finally, we can update the app action type to support our new actions by using the union type. Okay, our code should work now, but let me fix a minor issue with the random label. And now, as you can see, the random action is dispatched and the value is updated and the increment and decrement actions work as before. What I really like about this approach is that now we can add a new action that we call do something. And this action can have a new payload of type string. Of course, we need to add this new action in app actions type, and this action will update a new text property that we add to our state. Of course, we need to update our reducer function to support this new action. And when the action is dispatched, we simply return the current state and we update the text value with the payload we sent with the action. Now we need to add the new text property in the initial state and we also print it in the template of our component. We also add a new button in the template to dispatch the new action and as you can see the payload cannot be a number, it must be a string. So for example I can send my name. Okay, now when I dispatch the new action as you can see we see the value in the template. And now I can pass the whole state or part of it to children components. So for example, I can create a new child component that accept a value property of type number and that simply display this value on its template. So we can now use this child component passing uh, the whole state or in this case, uh, just the counter. And you can see that the child component has always the state in sync with the parent. But I want to show you one more interesting stuff. If we come back to a reducer function, we can move the mouse over the payload. And as you can see in the increment action, the payload is type number, while in the do something, the type is a string. What we are using here are TypeScript guards. In fact, this mechanism allows us to narrow in the type in according with the switch case. When the action is increment, the payload will be of the same type we have defined in the increment action. And the same happens with do something. I think this mechanism is very useful to avoid stupid mistakes while writing our code. And that's all for this video. Let me know what you think. And you can find the links to my articles in the description below. Bye.